to lose a fourth. It's MVP Hot Six versus Invictus Gaming. And we haven't seen a single Lesher. Like, not a single one. Hey, the are question you, is, why would you let that hero through? It, it's only gone few, uh, through a few times as it is. Hasn't been actually 100% successful when it's gone through either, so it's not mm. like it's... The yeah, but we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about this again because we're going to see LGD again. But for me, all you needed to watch is what maybe did against with that hero against Secret, and it's just goodbye. There's going to be a point in the tournament where people are going to need to rely on something. And when you give away less shock, at least you're sure they're going to first pick it. So that's already a basis to a draft and how to prepare it for a match. So we might see it later, but you're not going to give it away for a best of one. That's, that's for sure. Yeah, only 13 times it's actually gone through. And it's an 85 win ratio, so not, not devastating, but reasonable. 61.5% is pretty good. The two main strats that we've seen from IG, I think, is like a really push-heavy strat with DK and Chen uh, are the backbones of that, as well as a 4-protect one with uh, burning on anti-mage or Naga. Uh, sometimes Spectre, but we haven't seen Spectre picked at all. I think we're going to see them run one of those two. Yeah. I, I would slightly favor the 4-protect one in this scenario. I feel like uh, even though you do expect a bit of a pocket strat, uh, you make MVP come to you. you, you put the pressure on them to make the plays. Yeah, as we saw versus match versus EG, their late game is a little suspect. Their early game is really, really strong. Yeah. Though. yeah. I'm looking to both these teams and just thinking about them. And I think oh, Vina yeah. is a very high priority target here. And she will be first picked. Uh, I barely had time to say it before he even gets. I didn't think he would get first picked actually, but mm. Jarex loves playing it, and IG also play a really good Lina, um, definitely on mid, and they also play a good support Lina. Yeah, I think I've, have have I seen MP run that hero mid? I think they run it both as a mid and a support. I wouldn't swear to that. Uh, I haven't seen MP on it, but I've seen Jarex and what he can do. In the seed qualifiers, he destroyed everyone with this hero. And so, if I'm not uh, uh, mistaken, Forev has run Lina, and he actually destroyed Vichy Gaming. It's one of the games they won uh, during the group stage, and he went like 20 to something. Like, he did amazing work with it. They did a safe lane, right? It was a safe lane, I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, they have actually four, uh, four of their players in the last 25 games. He and Forev, Jarex, and MP have all played Lina, so yep. it's a hugely flexible pick. Definitely, and that's the Fiori uh, raid in SF. Unless it is, <laughs> you know, Schwan or Face that plays it and Fiori plays support, but I don't think oh, it's going to happen. This I don't think we're so going to have the safe same. to assume that it's going to be a Fiori SF. I don't think we're going to have the Fnatic thing happening here. I, I doubt that Ferrari is going to be like, yeah, you know what? Actually, not. not I'm going to play like the support. You get to play it. No, I mean, the, 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 like the common point with the Fnatic though was that I believe IG changed drafters during the group stage at some point, and Luo got to draft for a few games, which is generally not a very good sign, you know, for a team. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're back to faith, which is rather positive. You know, after, like, they got a like, few days to, you know, think about what they did and wrong, especially. Yeah. So it can, I mean, back. it can be a good decision for the team. It's just a sign that something is not right. So exactly. it's, it's bad that it is happening, but it could have helped as well to get new perspectives. What exactly do you think IG's weak, biggest weakness was during the group stage? Like why they underperformed so Their team play, to me, their team play, and as I said earlier, also the space they give to their supports. I think, it, you know, the movement of your support early on is what's going to decide how the game's going to be played. And, you know, Faith and Schwan, they're known to be very, you know, Lord they're a very good support duo. They used to play with each other, and they're usually really the backbone of the team, and I haven't feel like they were in the last games they played. I watched a lot of their games casting, and we cast a lot of C9 games and IG games, me and Toby. And IG, what I felt was off for them was just when they went into team fights, they would sometimes not really overextend and dive the way you imagine, like into towers and stuff. They just put themselves in unfortunate situations. Right. You know, a slow and steady move, but into a bad scenario where you get surrounded or so. And it sometimes cost them the entire game. And Chon was playing really well in the majority of their games. So I would like to mention him as the MVP through the group stage. Yeah, I, I thought their, their support rotations had been good, but they just didn't capitalize on that. And that, that's an issue that we've also seen from C9. And you draw a contest, right, to C-Deck, who I think played the best Dota that we saw all day today, where they were just perfect execution in terms of getting in and out of engagements as five. And that's what's really been the problem spot for IG. They've been very hesitant to commit, and they've overstayed once they have. To me right now, like when you first pick SF, Dazzle, it's most likely going to be a push strat. 
you're most likely gonna group up behind your SF with mech that gets a very early mech because it's, he's radiant and the dust will sustain. So it's gonna be a five man, you know, like heavy team fight lineup that wants to push towers and secure objectives very early on. Roshan is, could be one of them. If they could go into a slaughter, it would be a very classic lineup that has been around many times um, in, in this patch as well. And to me, it doesn't seem like MVP Hot Six right now is really approaching the game that way. They pick Bloodseeker, which is fine, but he's not the best, you know, team fighter at all. Yeah. And they're banning Broodmother. Mm, to me, it doesn't seem like they understand that IG might want to go for this. And we we also said it earlier, it's one of their go-to strategies, just group up as five and force the issue quite early. No, I mean, what you said, by the way, about the Shadow Fiend is absolutely correct. Uh, um, Mushi is credited with inventing Mech Shadow Fiend, but Ferrari has certainly perfected that build. He's actually one of the three mo best mech builders in this patch. He's one of only three players to build it more than 20 times, and 15 of those were on SF. Uh, he, he really is great at, at compromising between using the Shadow Fiend as an early presence in team fights and pushes and still keeping up that ridiculous rate of farm. Spirit Breaker. Yeah, oh, I mean, he's also a very flashy player to look at. When you think about mechanical skill, if that, you know, if you just think those two words, Ferrari is one of the names that pop into your mind. He's just a phenomenal player, and I look forward to seeing his, his Shadow Fiend performance. Yeah, so this is most likely going to be a Lul offlane Spirit Breaker. Uh, this is a pick that they've gone to in the past, and again, you know, I, I, I said, I've said this stat in the past that really IG they live and die by Luo's performance as much as I think any team in Pro Dota 2. Uh, if he can have a good game on this hero, I think they've got this locked up. Yeah, definitely. I really like Hot Six's bans with the Brood Mother. I mean, Brood is going to slip through, but you really don't want it to let it through in a best of one. And Undying is, I think, just fits really well with IG's uh, strategy, especially combined with the Shadow Fiend and Dazzle. It leads to a really scary early game, and Bloodseeker can't really you know, go man mode against. Oh, and dying was a great ban, definitely. Okay. Like, that works into what Matt said about pushing as five. So the, br the brood ban is maybe a little bit off, but could also have been dangerous, but dying for sure, not something you want to go up against here. By the way, this pick also leads me to believe that this might be a core lean and a safe lane blood Bloodseeker. Uh, Jerax is their primary Earthshaker player. Uh, he's excellent on the hero, has just really, really solid assist totals, uh, 11 and a half assists per game. He's the type of player that's basically always where he has to yeah. be. You know, yeah. he, he, he's that type of support. You can always expect him to be where the action is. He, he's really good at reading what's going to happen. Uh, good understanding of the map in general. Just, you know, map awareness is very high for him. This game, I think a lot of weight is on the Spirit Breaker to initiate, though. Like, you're saying this is a five-man sort of push with the Shadow Fiend and Dazzle, which I definitely believe as well. But they kind of rely on Spirit Breaker to find the initiation. Because look at the D push that exists. You have Fisher, you have Blood Rite, you have Dragon Slave. If you don't kill, you're not going to get in on the towers. Yeah, definitely. And it's also, whenever you run a pushing lineup, you want to have initiation potential. Else, you're just sitting there, you know, eating nukes or getting harassed until you, there's actually an option for the enemy to just go and actually team wipe you. So. I think you guys are dead on, and it, it makes me worry a little bit that what we were commenting about the players and some of the problems may apply to the draft as well. You know, when you look at these four heroes, uh, they're four heroes that we know that these individual players can play really well. But the question is, is the synergy there, especially against what MVP at six is bringing to the table? I think it's a bit scary. I would really love to see a slaughter in that draft. It's also a hero Burning has played, and uh, he actually won many games with it. But um, yeah, I, I think Slaughter fits perfectly. It, it brings initiation. It's going to make Shadowfin even more scary. I think other teams have also run it either in scrims or just in some group stage match that I must have missed. Because when you see Shadowfin and Dazzle, plenty of the teams will fifth yes. ban the Slaughter. Yeah, they, they always go towards that. Yeah. For many reasons, like obviously the minus armor reduction is a thing. It's also Slaughter is not the best laner. And Dazzle really helps him to be more like really stronger in the lane. and. He gives him killing potential. Yeah. Resident Zeus expert on the panel. Is this a core Zeus or are we going to see a four position? Mm, I think core Zeus, but it's, you know, combination with the Bloodseeker. Zeus, Zeus's win rate is actually terrible. Yeah. <laughs> group stage. It was like one in six at some point. And I mean, of course, some of it is Glimmer Kate to blame, but at the same time, 
I, I don't actually really know what's terribly wrong with the hero. Yeah, I, I actually thought Zeus Bloodseeker was going to be a pocket strat that more teams would pull out. But yeah, we, we just really haven't seen it. Uh, and when we've seen Zeus, he hasn't had a lot of success. I, I do think Glimmer Cape is a big part of the explanation here. Um, I well, just, I feel like like IG, the, the, the Slardar pick was a really, <laughs> really good suggestion. It's an underrated aspect of Burning, uh, that Burning actually had some games on Brewmaster. He can play those initiating type yeah. heroes. He's really good at this. He definitely can. For sure. And he's good at finding farm. And they, those heroes, you need someone that's experienced, you know, like that's going to know when to farm, when to go into a fight. And because the problem with unexperienced players on Slardar or Brewmaster is that they keep on fighting when they probably shouldn't or looking for, you know, openings and they just fall behind. Yeah. Just to uh, just to confirm the Zeus pick, by the way, this is the ninth time in group stages have been picked. Currently has a win rate of 12.5%. Impressive. Yeah. Hot Six did play it at the core, but that was versus, I think, EG's uh, Ember Spirit. And what EG did was just kind of wait until they had BKBs and massive items and then just killed them, which, I, again, is MVP's weakness. I did witness that game where Zeus actually won. It was an amazing amount of bursts, and the poor Ember, who was rushing Manta style, did not get anything done. Uh, that was one of the most painful games from the group stage. Uh, I want to ask you, Merlini, in this current patch, which position would you rather see Zeus on? Because he's a pretty flexible hero. I think he has trouble like sieging high ground, yeah. um, and that definitely makes him much more risky as a core. Um, but I mean, people have been tending for like the safer builds, like Bloodstone, so you Phantom do shore up for the late game. But I mean, I think it's much safer to run him as a support. But I think he can work very well in a core if you have a very aggressive lineup and have good high ground siege. Yeah, and I'm actually kind of glad to see this. That you know, we can talk about putting burning on a brewmaster. We can talk about putting burning on a slaughter. But you know what? It wouldn't be burning if he wasn't on some kind of hard farming hero. And I actually like the new incarnation of PL as, as a kind of a compromise between a hero that obviously benefits a lot from farm, but he can fight very, very well with the drum and defusal. You just want to see Burning break some records in farm. <laughs> just admit it, Nahas. <laughs> guilty, guilty, man. I, I, I love Burning in my stats. I mean, we saw an 8-0-0 zero 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 game from him on his AM in the group stage. What else do you want from a Burning AM? Yeah. All right. That's a surprising pick, the THD. It's most likely going to be support. If we said that Shaker was a support and Zeus was a core, it could be offlane as well. Okay, time for our final game of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Let's find out who the fourth and final team are to advance through to the next round in the lower bracket. It also means we're going to lose one more, sadly, as we go down to 12. It's back over to the commentators for our final game of the night. That's right, a team is going to be out of TI after this. As the hour approaches midnight here, Blitz in Seattle, I see the crowd. It's thinning out a little bit, but you know what that means, Blitz? It means we only have the most hardcore Dota fans still here. The people who live and breathe Dota. Let's hear some noise for the last elimination match of the night. Let's also hear it for the fourth best casting combo in <laughs> Dota 2, excluding Toby Wong. <laughs> Thank you. Not Blitz. as much cheers for that, but MVP you you Pot Six versus so Invictus Gaming. So excited about this IG a team that when they got burning, I thought they were just stacked from top to bottom. And mm -hmm. MVP Hot Six, not a. T I mean, I played against all these guys, and yes, they were impressive to me, but never did I think that they would come this far. Second MVP team fighting to stay alive in the international. Already an impressive storyline from MVP Phoenix being able to make it through. MVP Hot Six, though, I think are probably facing up against one of the toughest teams in the lower bracket, if not the toughest team. IG, as you said, looks so incredibly stacked going into this international. Uh, and a team that I actually expected to, at the very least, make up a bracket, but couldn't quite make it through the group stage in order to claim that position are now potentially out in their fir very first game of the main event. Honestly, it just feels like IG aren't always on the same page. It kind of feels like they play four-man Dota. It never really feels like Burning is on the same page as the rest of his team. At times, it feels like Ferrari takes a little bit too much of a risk in the mid lane. But I mean, this is still an incredibly talented team. And MVP Hot Six, you know, MVP Phoenix actually had the option between choosing who they wanted to play against, and they actually took Newbie over their sister squad. And when I asked March about it, he just said, it's a really strong team. We really feel like this is a team, if they live up to their potential, can go really far. 
Now, what potential is that? Obviously, you know MVP, Hot 6, perhaps a bit better than most analysts even. Uh, what exactly is their biggest strength? I think it's just their team play and their trust in one another. That's what I get from the Koreans at all times. It's that despite what happens, maybe they're not the most individually talented, mm -hmm. they listen as one unit. They're willing to trust each other. It's that ride or die mentality. You don't care if you're gonna go down, you're all gonna go down in the same ship, the same strategy, and I mean, they're willing to risk it all in this Bloodseeker Lena that they've been running successfully in the qualifiers. They just seem to be saying to themselves, okay, it doesn't really matter. This is our chance, best of one. Let's use what we're comfortable with. Now, looking at the draft, MVP Hot 6, it seems to be that they are going to have to be rather aggressive here. Maybe not necessarily early on in the laning phase, but definitely going into the mid game. There's no way you want to be going up against a Phantom Lancer in the late game, especially with the heroes you're rocking now. I mean, you said, you were talking about it earlier. You said that you really felt like Phantom Lancer had no equal when you started going late game. Yeah, I think we saw it demonstrated in that LGD series against Empire, where Empire had some fantastic lead. They had plenty of heroes that could deal with the Phantom Lancer, but when it comes to late game, it doesn't matter what wave clear you have, what battle furies you have, what Mjolnir's you have, it doesn't really matter because the hero will just outlast you, outfight you, outmaneuver you, and the fact that he constantly has a slow up, the fact that he can constantly doppel walk makes it so hard for you to fight against him, but might be a fight here is early level one fight. Lua already pushing back against Jarex. They're gonna try and battle over that bounding road. MP actually dropping very low already. They need a couple more right clicks. Fate really gunning for it. Needs a little bit more. The Lance comes out, but it's still not enough. He's gonna survive with just a sliver of HP. Oh, he's gotta focus on Lua. Light Strike Array actually lands on him. He keeps the health motion alive. Now he's stuck. He's on the wrong side of the fissure on that one. And the team MVP Hot Six start running him down. Oh, he got Light Strike stuff. Array landed. And that First blood going to Jerex. That was almost so close to being a kill for IG, but they just managed to make that happen. As Hot Six, I mean, MP landed stun after stun. They didn't even break the salve on him, but this is going to have some repercussions as, yeah, he already instantly loses the sentry mid. They know now that he doesn't have a ward there, and MP's going to struggle because he used most of his mana just to be able to survive. Oh, Fisher block. Nope, not quite a full block out there, unfortunately. MVP Hot 6, they're going to be challenged here by IG. IG not wanting to let the Bloodseeker just free farm, but at the same time, this will be hurting Burning's farm a bit. Why do you think that is? Simply because the Spirit Breaker is in such a favorable position now in this one versus one? I think they believe they can live in this top lane, but Burning is going to struggle to farm because anytime you get a really good Fissure on Faith or Burning, that could mean a kill. He does have the Mango, and he does have a decent amount of regen, but Perev should just free farm in this lane. And uh, Sunbi, this lane should be difficult for him because the kill potential on Luo is actually quite high. If he gets one or two bashes, like 17%, then you can see an easy kill, but he's going to have to be careful in this lane. And what interests me most is this Ferrari versus MP matchup. MP to me is a type of player that is incredibly stable, but he's not your superstar caliber player, whereas Ferrari absolutely is. He's the type of player that you can stake a game on, and I want to see if MP can keep up. So far, he's doing all right. 8-2 and two in CS compared to the 8-1 and one from Ferrari. Of course, it's going to be getting more and more difficult as the SF gets those higher level of raises and just starts spamming out the lane. Plus, he is Radiant Side SF, which is obviously a bigger advantage than normal, being able to have quick access to those two neutral camps. They are going to rotate now. They're trialing back to bottom. They've already put the Phantom Lancer down there, and it seems like they're going to move our Spirit Breaker around a little bit. Why do you think they started off? Did they just go into that aggro, like, sort of aggro dual lane situation and just realize, okay, that's not going to be good enough, and now that we've gotten the Spirit Breaker to level 2 or 3, he can actually put some pressure on mid? They probably either anticipated dual lanes or an aggro tri lane and thought that their dual lane would just be more successful. Okay. Uh, the Earthshaker plus Zeus in the off lane would probably not do that well against the Spirit Breaker, because there's almost no kill possibility, and at bottom, there's not even a question. Sunbi, he's got to be dead here. They pop the mango just to be able to have that extra land. Sunbi is trying to make the jukes here. Oh, what? So good, but it's just not enough. He's surrounded by three heroes. No matter what kind of jukes you move there, it's just never going to be enough. So Sunbi does fall one to one now as IG tie up the kill score. And now this is going to make it so much easier for the laning phase. Lul's almost level four. And this is going to help so much because the Lina actually is going to struggle to survive against these ganks, but. Faith forced into a TP here. Ooh, that ice path just shy of stopping that TP. 
I think even if they had stopped that TP, it was unlikely that they kill it. Mm -hmm. But still, they're forcing everybody out of that top lane, and this is just going to mean that Forev is going to get absolute free farm. And yeah, the Fisher, oh, nice! Fisher actually pushes him back, but the Light Strike Array is just not there in time from NP. Still, though, keeping in touch. That uh, SF, CSY, 21 and 2, the SF. Meanwhile, Lina 19 and 4. So, really, this middle lane, MP is keeping in step with Ferrari quite nicely. And, like I said last game, it's not necessary for you to keep in step with the Shadow Fiend and Farm. You know that the Shadow Fiend is naturally just going to out CS you. You can't get bothered by that. Instead, what you have to focus on is what you do stronger in the mid game. But, MP, he's not going to be able to take this rune as Luo denies it. Pick it up, that Bounty Rune, and uh, the SF, oh dear, actually got the Regeneration Rune. So this is really where you're going to see that SF step ahead uh, of the Lina. He's got a triple stack hard camp waiting for him. The medium camp is there as well for him to access, plus the Regeneration Rune at hand. Going to be very tough. MVP Hot 6, meanwhile, they're going to have a harder time dealing with this Spirit Breaker as an offlaner until the Bloodseeker is level 6. Now, once he has that, our Spirit Breaker is going to be in some serious trouble. Yeah, right now, Heen is only level 2, and he's having a hard time harassing him, but here we go, as they are going to make the attempt. They do have boots on for Evan. We have seen how strong the Bloodseeker is with this Thirst. It doesn't look like he's interested in stopping, either. He's chasing us down. Are going. Lua actually charts. Rev is going to be forced back there. Of course, they're always willing to make those kind of dives, right? Because the Bloodseeker left alone in lane is easily going to be able to heal back up thanks to Blood Rage. So there's not like you use any resources there. Maybe you missed one or two CS, but well worth it to kick the Spirit Breaker out of lane. And that's the strength of the Bloodseeker because you're so afraid of him diving on you and the rest of the lanes have to really pay attention to their HP. How, how much health? Like Burning actually has a bottle. As a result, you've got a Dazzle, you've got Juan. I mean, if you take a look at his region, he has South and two Tangos left over. And it looks like they do want to make a move on mid as MP is level 6, but he shouldn't spot this coming as from Bog. Luo's going to come in. Oh, the Fisher is going to be able to catch both beautifully. The Light Strike Array is still going to miss, but they're going to turn onto Luo anyway. MP doesn't quite have a Laguna Blade mana, unfortunately. So the Spirit Breaker will be able to get out, but still a very nice defensive reaction from MVP Hot 6. Oh, Jarex is still chasing this. He knows that he has a stun mana soon. Forever comes in. MP trying to land that Light Strike Array. Does get it, but the Spirit Breaker is just still too tanky. And MP realizes that, so he backs up. The Dragon Slave by itself is still not going to be enough. Now, they overly rotated, perhaps. MVP Hot 6 brought Forever into this lane. He did, did keep everyone alive, and that is nice. But it's still Frev who's forced to give up that top lane farm, and now no one's there farming it up. Does pick up his level 6 on the Bloodseeker, though, so that is perhaps something that can facilitate an early kill on IG. Yeah, and impressively, he's still way ahead of the pack when it comes to CS. Almost at 40 and just 6 minutes in the game, even with that rotation, but we've seen it time and time again. The Shadow Fiend is just going to snowball. He's got such a huge stack waiting for him after this. Juan doesn't even have to devote that many resources to it because he can simply just take the mid lane when the Shadow Fiend decides to go for that stack. And so that's the function that the Radiant side gives you, is that you can give up your mid, give it to one of the supports who decided to stack for you, give them a level or two, and at the same time, just skyrocket and farm over the enemy mid. Uh oh, Sunbe going for the TP out. The charge isn't going to be there in time. He gets away. Nice play from Sunbe. Just really top-notch awareness there. Our Zeus is about to pick up his level 6, and you compare that to the enemy off later, Spirit Breaker only sitting at level 4 and a half. So despite the fact that I would say uh, our Zeus should have a harder time in lane against the spamming of the Phantom Lancer and the potential kill power there, uh, our Zeus is actually still ahead of the Spirit Breaker. So very nicely done there. As he comes back in the lane with that level 6, they're going to have some serious nuking power. Now, MVP Hot 6, they know this is a Radiant side SF. They know he's going to get very far ahead of any of the cores on their side. What do you do to stop the SF? Do you go for the early smoke and try and gank him while he's clearing stacks? You can't really. It's a little bit hard with the type of lineup that MVP Hot 6 have. They don't have any massive, massive ultimates right now that is going to impact the fight. For example, if you have the Tidehunter Ravage or something along those lines, or even the gyrocopter cooldown, call down, then you can simply just go into the jungle, contest with the smoke, and you'll be able to win the fight just fine. But it looks like they're actually just going to go for it as they should be able to invade. But the problem is they might just run into Chuan first, and this is not the target they want. Is He's actually going to spot this. He drops the ward at the same time. And oh, they pop the ultimate, but a little bit too late. Jarex has already thrown out his Fisher. They're going to start running for Faith, but IG realize what's happening. They quickly back themselves up. And a missed opportunity once again for MVP Hot 6. And this is the problem. The smoke was a good idea, but 
the vision that they had was limited. Jarex just had to shoot that blind in. This might still work though, as Ferrari's being a little bit too greedy. He does have an invis rune, and that's exactly why Rubik's gonna TP, but it's not even gonna matter. And he just throws out a blind light strike array, but very clearly was not gonna land there. Great play from Ferrari, forces out an ultimate. And our Spirit Breaker actually perhaps gets enough time in this top lane to get his level six, which is so critical for a Spirit Breaker. Ganking mines, kill potential is just off the roof once he's able to pick up that ultimate. Still though, he's gotta beware. Oh, oh nice pick up there, Jerix. Goes down to Ferrari, who now is going to be very rapidly closing in on that mech. And this is what's really concerning for me, as you have both the Dazzle as well as the early mech coming in from IG. The sustain is going to be there to keep these heroes rather healthy. And the Bloodseeker's just not going to feel that kind of snowball that you usually see. As the heroes get lower and lower, he becomes more powerful. He gets one, picks up another. He usually just rolls through the whole entire uh, fight after that one kill. but. Oh, its biggest concern is can you actually get that first kill, especially with all these heals coming into play? I think MVP actually have a really good team lineup for being able to fight around the mech. You can pretty much spam the Earthshaker Fissure, one or two Arc Lightnings, and force the mech early. The problem with them, though, is that they have so many... They have Their main core is a melee hero, and so without a BKB, he's pretty much going to have to run in point blank and at top. They're going to pop the ultimate. They know that they're at top, and I think this is going to signal MVP Hot 6 to run away. Start backing up. Smokes pops. Ferrari just starts cleaning through. They're actually going to TP up with MP. Jerex is going to spend him t his time actually farming up the middle lane, trying to finish up that soul ring and perhaps tranquil boots. Burning in the meantime, though, has been having a lovely time at bottom. He's uh, 49 and 11, still trying to catch up to the Bloodseeker, of course, with that early laning phase that he had. Probably didn't pick up too much CS there. It's really significant right now that Ferrari's left alone in this top tower. It's going to be hard for them to be able to contest this. As Ferrari can probably just double spam out the raise, but the tower is so low. That is the benefit of having a Jakiro. They actually cast the Blood Rage on him, and I think we saw them do this earlier in the qualifier, mm -hmm. but it was with the Pugna. But this time, the Jakiro is so much safer. He just has more HP and more to yeah. work with. It was incredibly dangerous putting the Pugna on the front line with Blood Rage on him. He's already one of the squishiest heroes, as is. So you would oftentimes see him just immediately get blown up. Seems to be a much better idea with this Jakiro. Safer push all around. Plus, it's still a support hero, right? So uh, even if you are, in a way, committing to a tower push, if IG want to blow everything they have for a support like that, MVP Hot 6 are probably going to be very happy with that. Yeah, right now, MVP Hot 6 are going to be really happy about the fact that their Zeus offlane is level 8. He hasn't really had time to run around anywhere, but he's just done a good job of soaking experience bottom. He knows when Luo is off the map, and he's just playing incredibly safe. He's just doing a really good job of keeping up in levels, but the problem right now that MVP Hot 6 are going to run into is that the Shadow Fiend does have a fully completed mech, and it's going to be hard for them to get into straight 5v5 engagements without a little bit more I in items. Like, the Bloodseeker is probably going to go for the SNY, but until he gets that full component, it's going to be hard for him to just run in and charge. Okay, maybe even pre-BKB, it's going to be difficult for him, as they do have enough lockdown for him. Three-man smoke from MVP Hot Six. We'll see if they find anybody, but in the meantime, I want to talk about that. Why do you think we don't see a Bloodseeker go for the Hand of Midas, which is quite popular on four Bloodseekers? Is the tempo of this game perhaps just too fast? I just think that Forever recognizes that the Bloodseeker isn't going to be able to go late game against the Phantom Lancer. Like, I've seen it time and time again. Yes, you have the Blood Rite, which is an AoE, but you don't want to just build into items that fight against the Phantom Lancer because it's a losing fight. He burns too much mana, he can disengage too quickly, you don't want to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and so it's better to just simply build for the mid-game and run at the Phantom Lancer so he just can't build up an item lead. I like this setup. MVP Hot 6, they didn't actually find a kill as they smoked up through the enemy jungle, but they did take away the uh, rune vision from IG in that bottom area. Plus, they also got some very aggressive vision up, and they now are surrounding Burning. Go see if there's any TPs here. The Silence is going to be able to land on Burning, already leading things up. They're just going to pop him real quick. Keen is kind of stuck here, but that's okay. None of IG are actually rotating over. In fact, they're still trying to go for that middle tier one tower push. But Jerex is here now with the Fissure to be able to intercept reps, push these heroes back alongside Sunbi. More TPs coming in. MP leading things off. There goes the Fissure for already, already dropping a bit low. 
IG not going to be able to get that tower. It will be denied. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Brand actually going to be hit by the Spirit Breaker here. Intercepted, though, by Heen. The Silence is going to come out. Spirit Breaker thought he could take this one. Even with a 17%, there's no way he could beat out the Bloodseeker. Yeah, that's the strength of the Bloodseeker right there. With the Thirst, after that Bash is done, he's pretty much just going to kite you in a circle. That Blood right, he's opting to go for the max on it, and it's paying off huge dividends as they were able to kill Burning at bottom. They just killed the Spirit Breaker, and MVP Hot 6 are doing a good job of controlling the map right now. They've speak, taken out speak a little bit more about the, the choice of Blood right though. I mean, it seems to be paying off, but why do you think he went for that decision, especially since he has potentially really good combo heroes in both the Zeus and the Lina? I don't think he wants the damage increase on the other side, where you just take a ton of damage, because his heroes are still squishy. And if the Phantom Lancer lances you once and you get nuked by the Shadow Wave, that could potentially just mean more than half your HP. So I think he opted to go for the Blood Rite because he's got so many abilities that can line it up. You've got MP who can land a stun. You've got Heen who can just ice pass in that general direction. You've got the Earthshaker Fissure, which might be the best combination between the two. So he's got a lot of different ways to set this up, and he's incredibly comfortable with that. He's in a bit of trouble here. Lil starts off with the charge. Already the Zeus ultimate going off. Just trying to keep the rest of IG back. There goes the ultimate. And the Spirit Breaker will be caught here. He's ruptured up and trying to run him with his self out of here. He's got the Shallow Grave TP away. No stuns coming out. The Lightning Bolt is there to stop at the last half second. And MVP Hot 6 do pick up the kill and save Heen at the same time. Looks like they may be able to now go for a middle tower push as well. And that was just a really great rotation by everyone from MVP Hot 6. They realized that at that HP range, it doesn't even matter if the Shadow Fiend goes for the mech. Good rotation by Sunbeam. You know, sometimes Sunbeam has struggled in this tournament to keep up in levels and farm with the rest of his team. But it's actually Luo this game that is struggling so hard. He's got the Cloak, which probably means that he's going to go for the Glimmer Cloak. Which makes sense against his lineup, but he's so far away from it. And more importantly, Sunbeam's just keeping up in levels, whereas he's not. Ferrari once again trying to take a tier one tower, but MVP Hot Six are just not giving any room to IG. Now it's going to be IG teleporting back to their tower to see if they can defend, but it's a bit too late. Chuan steals the Fisher, looking for that opening, but it's not going to be good enough. MVP Hot Six have already retreated safely at a distance. Two to four right now, 15 minutes in, and MVP Hot Six are beginning to get a bit of a net worth lead and hoping to be able to snowball this game forward. Especially with the Yule Scepter coming in for the Lina, this will mean potentially easy pickoffs, especially on some of these core positions. IG. I think the biggest item they can pick up right now is finishing the BKB for Ferrari. Charges coming in. MVP Hot 6. Looks like they're going to be losing MP right away. Nice Fisher to intercept there from Jerex, but MP is still caught and immediately blown up. But it's still the Spirit Breaker on the wrong side of the Fisher and will be chased down by Ferev. The rest of IG leave it up for a one for one exchange. They actually have to disengage here because the rest of MVP can filter in and there's no tower for IG to run to. So Ferev doesn't have mana for his rupture, but I still think this is kind of a wonky fight for them to take. I guess they trust in Ferrari's farm. He is level 11 with a mech up, the Ogre Club completed, and a magic wand, so the turnaround potential is high, but still. Burning starts going for Sunbeam here. He doesn't actually have anything, no TP whatsoever. He's going to be run down for the next Lance, and Burning does pick up a kill help facilitate a bit more farm. I was just about to comment on the fact that he seems a bit behind with just drums, treads, and a bottle right now, but that kill will certainly help bump him up up. 6k net, we're still a thousand gold behind this Bloodseeker, but it's really Ferrari, who, as you said, IG are trusting in farm-wise. Rev is deciding to go for the BKB instead of finishing the SNY, and I think he realizes that his team probably wants to get in fights earlier than him finishing the SNY into the BKB. That tells me that they want to go to Roshan sooner, and to be able to get into a fight into that Rosh pit. If he has an Aegis, they probably, or if he has a BKB, they probably can't lose that fight, especially since a lot of what um, the Spear Breaker is able to put out is magical damage. Like the Crater Bash is a passive, but it is magic. So it should be able to help quite a lot in just reducing the damage, even though it does appear spell immunity, but MVP Hot 6, they're struggling to keep up the levels, actually. That seems to be their biggest issue right now, is the Shadow Fiend just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, he's closing in on that BKB pretty quickly. The rest of IG, well, they may get a decent bump in experience if they find the opportunity for a dive in this top lane. Sunbi is hiding himself in the trees right now. Rest of MVP Hot 6, I'm sure, are ready to TP back. They've been pretty quick to move around the map. 
sort of situation. So IG don't really go for it. MVP Hot 6, however, will go for the Tier 2 Tower push in the bottom lane. They've got the combination of Jakiro and that Blood Rage from Blood oh, That's just so much. Glyph already going out, but Liquid Fire after Liquid Fire being spammed out. If they could actually get this tower, he will be very close to completing a mech of his own to kind of even out the mech advantage that IG have right now. It's doing 130 damage to the tower every single time he casts it. And I think that IG realized that it's just a losing effort. He's actually taking it so quickly. Ferrari, he has an invis rune. Do they have any sentries for this? I don't actually think they have any idea that this is coming. As Luo is coming in from the top, burning seeping in, and Ferrari with the chase. Nice intercept. Luo is immediately going to be stopped there by the ice path. He still gets off the ultimate, but he has rupture on him. And Frev wants to be able to pick up this kill, but it's going to be slowed down by Shalgrave. MP, meanwhile, turns as much damage as possible onto Ferrari, but he's still going to be blown up immediately by the races. Spearbreaker gets out, and MVP Hot 6 lose their Lina. Sunbeam comes in, but the rest of IG are still very healthy again. His Bloodseeker just isn't going to get a whole lot of stacks on his passive right now. Yeah, part of the problem right there was that M Forever actually had the Rupture stolen by him, and Chuan actually just used it on MP, and so it was pretty much impossible for them to fight him. At the same time, they did manage to grab Luo as Rex is going to get Phantom Lance over here, but he should be just fine. Yeah, they don't want to be diving into a Tier 1 tower. IG playing a very controlled game right now. I'm sure they feel like, economy-wise, they are catching up or even staying ahead of MP. MVP Hot 6 by now, especially with our SF getting so big, about to hit that 10k marker. The Shadow Feed is honestly really making this game incredibly difficult for MVP Hot 6 because MVP Hot 6, they have to continue to pressure now much sooner than they would like, and Frev decides to go back for the Sanjin Yasha. I guess that Ogre Club is just meant for a little bit more HP. Do they have a medallion on anybody? No, but this should still be a pretty easy Roshan for them with the Blood Rage. Yeah, the Blood Rage, the increase in damage, they have allows you to be able to do Roshan so early, even if it is still only level one. They've got a decent amount of right-click damage out as well from even some of their supporting casts, such as the Jakiro with that liquid fire. IG, though, realize what's going on. The charge goes right through the Roshan pit, and now it's put Heen up on the cliff. Meanwhile, Sunbi, he's going to be stopped. He actually tried to go for the TP out, but Lua says, no way, you're going to be the first one dead in this fight. MVP Hot 6 trying to turn this one around, and actually start backing themselves up forever. Turning around, Heen stuck on the cliff, still in trouble, but MVP Hot 6 have no way to be able to help him out. Heen just waiting for his opportunity to TP away, goes for it now, but the TP, oh, it completes just in time ahead of the ice pad for M. Dropping lower, MP still has the Laguna Blade, and IG think about diving that tier 1 tower, but realize it's a bit too dangerous. And once again, look at the HP pools on IG, they are all completely maxed out. That's the power of this early mech plus dazzle combination and they haven't had to expend the BKB charge on the Ferrari yet. Good kill onto Sunbeam. And, and BP Hot 6, that could have been a lot worse for them, but this is gonna mean a tier one tower that they can't really afford to give up because map control is so crucial to their strategy right now as the Shadow Feed just continues to skyrocket in net worth. He's already up to 10K, 2.5K over the Bloodseeker. That's almost half of his S and Y that he's up ahead. And at this rate, we're gonna have a Diffusal Blade for our Phantom Lancer. Oh, what did he just kill, actually? Well, Ferrari just killed something on the ground that made him lose net worth for the Bloodseeker. I'm not quite sure what it was, but still, any little thing happens at this point is significant for MVP Hot 6 because Ferrari, I can't stop talking about it, but you can't ignore his hero, and Burning is just doing such a good job of catching back up into the game. He's already usurped the Bloodseeker, the second highest net worth in the game, and MP doesn't really have anything that's really going to change this next fight. Such good vision around the pit from IG right now. I mean, they've got this whole entire area completely controlled. So MVP Hot 6 are not really going to find the opening for Roshan. They're really desiring. Now Sunbeam, oh, he's going to be caught. Nice ice pad from Chuan to start things out. And Sunbeam, well, he pops his ultimate, realizing he's going to be blown up right away. In fact, our Spirit Breaker targets a large amount of damage from the Laguna Blade. Nice race from Ferrari to finish off the Zeus, and now they keep moving forward. He's slowed down by that Lance, but IG. Oh, charge in. Fisher already stopping low. He's taking a ton of damage, but already the Shell Grave is out. And now here comes that damage reduction out from Ferrari. Fered is just not finding the openings he really needs. Once again, the Dazzle is always there with the heals and the Shallow Grave to stop the single target focus of MV, or of IG. And this is the problem when you're a melee core against a team that has an insane amount of heals and a Shadow Fiend. You just can't really approach without the BKB. 
you can kite all around all you want, but as long as IG just kind of moves his force in the unit, it's incredibly hard for them to get uh, gone on as Chuan just keeps stealing relevant spell after relevant spell. He's got the Arc Lightning level 4. It's not going to make too much of a difference, but it just makes this fight so difficult for them. Bean. Careful here. Ferrari is looking for that long range raise, but is it going to find it? Top lane's also pushing in Spirit Breaker. Quick to move over and deal with that one. MVP Hot 6. Feels like they got to sit back and farm their next round of items because clearly these team fights are not changing for them anytime soon. Jerex is closing in on the Blink Dagger but could be stopped here. Nice turn around Fisher but immediately countered as Chuan catches that one, grabs him with the Telekinesis and Spirit Breaker finishes him off with the Phantom Lancer on the side. And time after time, Chuan just stealing spell after spell. That must have been the fourth time he's taken Fisher for himself. And he's put it to even better use than Jerex can right now as IG are just rolling to whatever they want to do at this point. With the mech up and the Dazzle always backing them up with the Shallow Grave and the Shadow Wave. If you look at his skill build, he's actually just opted to go all in for both of these abilities. Because he realizes all he has to do is wait for his team to get low, spam the heal, and Grave when the Bloodseeker tries to run at him. Yeah, I don't see really any item progression from MVP on 6. I mean, even that Blink Dagger, or sorry, the, the Blink Dagger small minor item for Sunbi that he's kind of had a large amount of a gold in the bank, kind of trying to finish that one up. Heen also trying to finish up his mech as well, but it's been so significantly delayed that it feels like it may not matter anymore. It's going to really be that BKB that, from Forev that could make a big difference for MVP Hot 6, but... It's still a ways away. MP now has an Oak Club. Does this mean we're going to be seeing a BKB out from him? Or does he still go for the Aghanim Scepter and has just chosen to forego the early point booster that most cores prefer? I almost think that he still has to go for the Aghanim Scepter, in my opinion. I feel like the damage that you get from it is just too strong, and they don't really have the best way to deal with Ferrari right now, especially when he pops his BKB. He gets ruptured, he holds his ground. The rest of his team can just surround him, play the A team, and just wait. IG are smoked up. They're going to get aggressive. They realize the type of advantage they have. They don't want to take a fight in the Roche Pit if they can help it, just because of the amount of AoE abilities that MVP have. And MVP erroneously believes that IG are going to walk into that Roche Pit, but IG are just completely content. Waiting things out. Zeus Ultimate being popped. And they definitely know that IG are smoked up. My Strike Array actually landing on Ferrari. Maybe they can blow him up right away. The Ferrari, though, is countered. He's going to be able to get off the BKB. Almost popping the ultimate. Now revs it up. Sunbeam completely trapped there. Nothing he can do about that one. Ferrari has to wait out. BKB with the rupture on top of him. The rest of IG surrounding him, making sure he's not going to go down, even as the flames. Lick him 26 minutes in, 9 to 5. IG are just still holding such a dominant position in this game. Every single time it feels like they're sustained, it's just too much for MVP Hot 6 to force the fight. And a double damage room picked up by Ferrari. They have the medallion for themselves. It's quite easy for them to go for this Roshan. And, I mean, they're just holding a line right now that MVP Hot 6 just can't cross. The Fissure from Juan was way too much in that fight right now. He's got the... He just even sold the Thunder God's Wrath. I didn't even notice that as... If there's an MVP for me, it's just got to be Chuan. The amount of spells that he's stolen, the lifts that he's gone to initiate the fights, he's just been a team in this game. Absolutely. Ferrari picks up the Aegis. Now both their Phantom Lancer and their SF are well ahead in net worth over the Bloodseeker and the Lina. Lina, who is going to be still going for that Aghanim Scepter, guess she just chose to go for the Open Club first is getting close. Another 900 gold. Perhaps things can change with the Blood Rage combination and the Aghanim Scepter that is an insane amount of pure damage on one hero. Maybe enough to be able to catch out and blow up one hero before that Shell Grave comes in from the Dazzle, which just seems to be the saving grace every single time. I think the problem right now for MVP Hot 6 is they don't have a reliable way to lead a fight. Like, you don't have anything that's going to break the BKB or catch him before he can get the BKB off. Maybe Jarex getting a Blink Dagger is the best option that you have right now because if MP Yules is up in the air, Burning just pops his BKB, turns and fights. If you rupture him, then they hold the line, sit behind him with the Shallow Grave and the mech, and there's not much you can do about it. Careful for Rev, he's running into three heroes, has to bounce himself back. And IG once again playing very well around that rupture, always in a defensive position in the heals to make sure that Thirst doesn't stack too much. They don't see this charge coming, but I don't even know if he continues to go for this. 
he keeps on going. And, oh, Jesus, already blowing up the Jakiro. Rest of MVP, Hot Six, not much they can do. They don't want to be fighting against the Aegis, so all they're going to do is try and split push with MP at the top lane, but it's not going to make much of a difference as IG take their first Tier 2 tower away from MVP. And they're just playing such a careful, exacting game right now as MVP, Hot Six, just not giving any room to breathe. And IG's just not taking any chances. They continue to four man around the map. They continue not to overextend. They play four man Dota over and over again. They're completely comfortable with MVP going for the split push style because it's still just Alina. Like, you can deal with her later on in the game. Even with her Aghanim Scepter, there's enough heal on your team that you're not going to feel too pressured. And Ferrari, as a result of that Aghanim Scepter, he knows it's coming. He's going to just go for pure HP with the Scotty. And he's almost there too. One ultimate down, another one coming in soon with Burning. Already has the Reaver to build into his heart. Any bit of pop that MVP Hot 6 thought that they had, it's just not going to matter against these two cores building up so much raw HP. So they're going to have to find perhaps a trickier way to be able to win a team fight. Right now their tier 2 tower in the middle lane is being threatened. Again, they're just going for the split push from MP, but he can't really commit to that either against the Spirit Breaker. He has to TP back. Yeah, Lewis just using that ping pong ability of that charge to come back to that mid lane. They don't have to go for the high ground if they don't want to because they've got wards in the MP jungle. And they've got a ward right outside their bottom lane. It's so hard for MVP to leave their base without smoking up, but Jerex does have that blink dagger, and that's what I was talking about. They need a reliable way to initiate fights, and I don't really see how they're going to do this when IG have the vision that they have. Well, a BKB coming in, perhaps a blood raged up Earthshaker with the initiation of Echo Slam. The problem's still going to be that his Aftershock is only level 2, so even when he jumps in, he's only got a 0.9 second stun. That feels like enough time for the SF to be able to get off his BKB ahead of the combination of Enchant Totem and Fisher. Oh, for sure. Right now, that Earthshaker's a little bit too underleveled to do anything about it, but MVP, they don't really have a better choice than to just turtle and hope that IG overextends right now, but IG, they're just sticking together as 4, sticking together as 3. They don't really care because they can just send Burning off to farm wherever he wants on the map, and they can feel the net worth advantage that the Shadow Fiend has over Uh-oh, Ferev, he's gonna be caught here by the Telekinesis. They will immediately chain stun him down. Another pick off for IG. As you said, staying grouped up as for finding the openings and Burning just making sure that those lanes are pushed to the MVP hot six side of the map. There's that Scotty Ferrari now reaching 2300 HP by 30 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty absurd right now, the amount of farm that he has. MVP Hot 6, I mean, their stomachs are going to go cold after they see that. Is going to be quite worried about how they're going to have to deal with Ferrari at some point in the game. The Aghanim Scepter on Lina is complete, but she's still only level 13. It's not quite enough damage to be able to slice through the amount of health that he has. His 2300 HP with the mech boost and one shadow wave, it pretty much cuts the Lina in half. Chuan, he's going to find it. He tried to go for the TP out, but immediately blink in from Chuan plus the Telekinesis stop. And it's just inevitable at this point. Heen has got to be accepting his fate soon. And Spirit Breaker comes in. The Lance is there as well. He just backs himself up into a corner, but there is no escape. It's a good attempt by MVP Hot 6 to split up the map because they don't have any vision. They're pretty much doing this blind, but it's the best chance that they have right now. They can't just sit in their base, wait for IG to push because IG is the type of team that just plays that annoying style of Dota where you want them to push and they just won't. They'll just farm out your entire jungle. They're saying to themselves, okay, this is our TI redemption time. We're not going to go out in uh, the lower bracket. We're at least going to make it to the top 12. There's no reason for us to take any unnecessary risks. And I completely agree with them right now. Yeah, at this point in time, what's the, what's the reasoning in trying to push uphill with only a 7,500 gold lead when you can build 10, 12, 15,000 net worth lead over the enemy before you finally push uphill, especially when you know you rather easily have the late game advantage with the Phantom Lancer? Yeah, the Phantom Lancer is always your trump card. He's your insurance policy. Anytime that you think that you're making progressive steps towards closing that net worth distance, he just continues to get far ahead. He's got a fully completed heart and defusal blade. And you don't have the AoE necessary to deal with him. The Lina's kind of helpful, as is the Bloodseeker, but the Earthshaker just simply doesn't have the levels. So what's next on Burning's agenda? Can we finish up the Boots of Travel to make sure that he can always join his team and split push at the same time? Or do you just stack even more raw HP, perhaps go for the St Scotty next as well? I think going for the Manta is a decent idea. The Yasha is just cheap damage, but the Manta could help him go into the high ground and just send Illusions up one by one, but 
MVP Hot 6 aren't quite out of this yet. Although the situation does seem dire, they do have the dire side advantage. They can go for the Roshan. Prep does have his BKB, but their timing window is so limited now as they're just continuously getting out farmed around the map. Is they can, IG can afford to split push because they have all the vision in the world. BKB on Perez MP. Looks like he's gonna go for a BKB next. He's got the Ogre Club in hand. Not really any other items coming in for the Hot 16. At least not anytime soon anyway. IG, meanwhile, they've got a plethora of items that they're farming up because they are able to stay relatively split. As you can see, with Ferrari just farming up the enemy jungle. Looks like they're actually going to back up and go for smoke. They delayed the deny on the tower long enough for Ferrari to get in here. And they can just decide to go for the 5 man right now because they've built up such a lead and Burning's pinging around the map. Do they have a gem on their team? That's probably the best investment that they can make right now that would allow them to win the game because if they can just cut off the vision from MVP, that would force them to continue to play blind and it just makes any sort of move that they want to go for so risky. Right, especially against the spare break. Even just those one-off solo split pushes are easily countered. If you don't have any vision on the map, it makes it all the scarier. Speaking of the Spirit Breaker, he's got Glimmer Cape, Lads, and soon to be a BKB at this rate. All those BKBs, it's going to be incredibly troublesome for MVP Hot 6 to fight because if you look at it, two of their three cores depend on that magic damage. Even Brev, to a certain extent, doesn't really have physical damage to back it up. A large portion of his damage comes from that rupture, comes from that blood right. And if you take away those two factors, then all IG have to do is wait it out. MP, even trying to farm up the Ancients with the very little physical damage that he's rocking. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. He's almost got his B... Yeah, he's kind of close to his BKB. But Charge coming in. He is the target. Turns around for the Ice Path. Once again, does get it off. And there's a Blood right on top of that one. They changed on him pretty well. Ferret now starts going for that kill with the ultimate on top of that one. Spirit Breaker takes a lot of damage. Oh, but that's now he's going down so much. That's so much. And now he's going to be bumped by but the Spirit Breaker ultimate as well. He goes down. What could have been a pickoff just proves to be too tough for MVP Hot 6 to get. And now Burning. He wants more. He's going to start charging up hill immediately to defuse the blade on the Sunbeam. He just gets ripped apart. MP, he's next online. Yule Scepter is only going to set up Ferrari for a perfect ultimate. It's Heen as well. Ultra kill godlike for Ferrari. As looks like IG are finally ready to take this to MVP Hot 6's base. Ferrari feels so comfortable going for that blink. Blinking uphill doesn't even care. That ultimate wasn't even necessary against Zelina. He just decided to go for the style points, and I completely agree right now because IG are feeling it. They realize the advantage that they built up. They don't even have the Aegis for this push, and it doesn't even matter. It's Ferrari demonstrating his dominance over this game with a full Scotty. The Daedalus to follow as double racks are going to go the way of IG at just 36 minutes into the game. Pretty much a nigh unstoppable Victus Gaming. Marching through MVP Hot 6's base one by one. Two lane Arax. At this point in the game, usually two lanes Arax signify such a significant advantage that it's almost impossible to come back unless it's rather late into the game. At this point, we're still very much in the mid game. It's 36 minutes in. This game hasn't gone on that long. And yet, Ferrari is almost maxed out on items. Yeah, he could replace the mechanism, but it's still really impressive the amount of farm that he has right now. Almost nobody on MVP Hot 6 can contest him. Alina still is in level 16, and that might actually make a significant impact because that's half of his HP, but he still has the mech to work with, and MVP are smoked up. They think that IG are going to go for the Roshan, but IG don't even care. This has got to be a desperation. Smoke, MVP Hot 6, if they're going to go out, they're going to go out on their terms. They're not going to sit in their base and wait for IG to finish him off. They're going to take the fight. To IG. So Ferev, he farms up the bottom lane. Meanwhile, the rest of his team pushes into the jungle. Smoke on smoke. MP gonna be leading the way. The Fisher already stunning up, burning their chain stun up decently, but all that new damage only brings him to about half. Now Zumbi's gonna be targeted as Ferrari just jumps forward, and there it is before the fight's even done. GG is called from MVP Hot 6. They knew this one was over for a while. And this is so bittersweet as MVP Hot 6. They tried so far just weren't quite there, but IG take a victory and they did it in such a dominant fashion, showing that they are a team that should be feared. I think they're the last remaining team from the previous winners to make it through into the top 12.
Absolutely. So IG skate on to day number two. Of course, we're going to be saying goodbye now to MVP Hot Six. And that brings a close to our games for the night. Thank you to all you guys who have stuck around for the night. We're going to pass it off now to the analyst desk. Let's talk about this last game. Thank you very much, uh, Capitalist there. Well done to our commentary team throughout the day and all of the commentators that have taken part on day one. We have our final victors of the day, and they are a former champion, the last one that's remaining after we lost Nubi and Navi uh, earlier on. And of course, Alliance failing to qualify for this international as well. So only one team can go on and repeat as a team, and they remain in the championship. The star players walk off stage uh, mildly confused, it seems, but at least they're very happy at ending their day. MVP Hot Six. Thank are... you for joining us at the International 2015. You're very welcome. Uh, it's been a great day. Uh, it has been a great day uh, of great games and some surprises as well. We've seen new stars, we've seen the old stars falling out as well. And uh, I suppose, in a way, we should wrap up that last game very quickly.